This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is the Funda from Down Under, Ray Guy Award winner and first team All-American punter Tom Hornsey from the University of Memphis. <laughs> Today's edition of Sports Files will have a heavy blue and gray tone to it. Later in the show, I'll talk with former University of Memphis star soccer player Mark Sherrod, who is set to show off his skills at the upcoming MLS Combine. We'll also look back at a rough Saturday on the hardwood for both the Memphis men and women. But first, I sit down with one of the most decorated football players in the history of the University of Memphis, Tom Hornsey. The Ray Guy Award-winning punter wrapped up his stellar collegiate career last month and is now hoping to flex his leg muscles in the National Football League. We throw another shrimp on the bobby and talk football with a young man from Australia who became an All-American. Tom Hornsey, next on Sports Files. Tom, Happy New Year to you. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Got a lot going on this month of uh, January. We'll talk about uh, the bowl game you'll be playing in. You got the Ray Guy Banquet to get to. Before we do all that and talk about your career at Memphis, as everybody knows, you're from Australia. What was it like growing up in Australia? Um, I suppose it was, it was good. I lived next to the coast. Uh, it was, I think it was similar to what you'd find in America, just a few slight differences. Um, again, like living next to the coast, I was around the beach a lot and then um, went through school as anybody else would. And um, I think they have a similar schooling system. So it was, it was pretty similar to America, but there is that slight difference in just culture. Did you follow American sports, and did they show American sports all the time in Australia? How about the NFL? Was it shown in Australia? Never followed American sports or NFL or anything. The only time I did is when I found out about punting and being able to go to college. Um, I started watching it and trying to learn the rules and the, the sport. But growing up, it was Australian football and cricket um, and then tennis. So, yeah, I never followed American sports. Did they also play rugby there? Rugby, not from where I'm from. It, it was played, it is played, but it's more common in your northern states and New South Wales, so your east and north, so I never played it. All right, so you played Australian rules football. What is that like? What, I don't want you to go through all the rules and everything, but yep. what's Australian rules football? Uh, it's similar to, it's probably a mixture of rugby, soccer, and American football. You, you kick the ball, you pass it to your teammate. Um, it's similar to when I do the, the pooch punt. That's how I'd pass the ball, but it's a bit lower and flatter. Uh, then you have your tackling like rugby, and it's, you spread over a field like soccer. So, and you try, the object of the game is to get the ball through, kick the ball through uprights um, to score. So that, it's, it's, you kind of need to watch it to learn it, but that's exactly. how similar as yet. But a combination of the three. When did you start playing? How old were you? I started playing really young. Uh, n not so much competitively, but like when I was growing up, like, three, four, five, six, like that early, I'd be watching football and trying to play football. But then competitively, probably when I was nine, 10, you got like little league type stuff. And then all the way into probably when I was 19, I stopped to play, mm -hmm. um, try to punt. It's interesting, you call, it, you call it football. People around the world call soccer football. Yeah. And then we have our version in America, the regular football that we know and love, but it's all variations. So you're playing Australian rules football growing up. And then, as you just mentioned, around 18, 19, you, you start to punt. How did that transition take place? It took place. I, I, I was representing a team or my region in Australian football, and I wanted to get drafted and play Australian rules professionally. And that didn't turn out, and I was still trying to give it a shot. But in the meantime, I got a letter from Pro Kick Australia. Um, I had a coach, Nathan Chapman and John Smith, and they gave me the opportunity to come and try out and see if I have a leg for punting. And um, that first day, I showed them I just kicked an Australian-type punt which is slightly different in technique but with an American football and I had the power and the ability to change my technique so I, um, I kind of quit, quit football after their suggestion saying you can do this for a living so I did that and then it took me probably about eight to nine months to work out a film and to actually master, well not master but better adapt to the, the technique of punting and then I um, yeah got a film made and sent it over and Memphis was one of the teams. So you sent a tape out to different schools? Yep. And was the 
uh, reception warm from, from a lot of schools or was, was the only offer from Memphis? How did that work out? I had a, I had a lot of interest from um, a lot of teams, but my coach, Nathan Chapman, he, he put a lot of work in and it was really hard to bridge that gap and have an American coach say, yeah, we want to take on an Australian who's never played the sport before. So right. there's a lot of teams that had interest after looking at my film. They, they really were interested, but it was still pulling that trigger to say, yeah, let's ha take on a guy. So Memphis was really the one that supported me the most and probably the earliest and like, they were the first ones to do it. And they, I had a visit here and I enjoyed it. So I became, I had a relationship with the, the special teams coach back then. And yeah, so Memphis became the, the team. How tough of a decision was it to leave the family in Australia and go all the way to America to play at the University of Memphis? It was very tough. I mean, I'd never been outside the outside Australia. I hadn't crossed the country. So um, it was tough, but I knew that I'd be getting my education paid for and I would have the opportunity to take this further into the NFL. So um, it was tough, but I think it was definitely the right choice. Was it an easy transition or a tough transition, getting used to everything that's happening here in the United States? It was easy in the sense that I came over and I was able to fit in with a football team who I'd been in that culture in Australian football. So to fit into the team wasn't that hard. And from there, the team, my team support that they helped me through a lot of the culture changes and even words and things like that. So um, I got a lot of help. So it made it a lot easier. I know if I came over here and wasn't a part of the football team or just on a visit or whatever it would be, mm -hmm. um, it would have been pretty difficult just trying to work my way around Memphis. But the football team really helped and the teammates kind of made it easy. Seemed like you made great uh, strides with punting the ball back in Australia. We had that punt that you became famous for at the University of Memphis, be able to pin teams deep uh, inside the 20 yard line, back it up with spin, but also the booming punts that we've seen you uh, uh, kick. But what was the toughest thing as far as punting is concerned when you got to Memphis, when you're trying to better your craft, what was the hardest thing? The hardest part was probably the equipment. I'd never worn a helmet before, shoulder pads. That was something I had needed to get used to looking through a vial, like a, a, a cage. Right, and the extra uh, weight. That the extra weight mm -hmm. and just the, the feel of the pads and everything on me. So they kind of did alter my technique a little bit and just, I mean, any minor detail, any minor change can throw off your punt. So I got, had to get used to that. And the other thing was I'd never received a snap from a deep snapper until mm -hmm. I got here and started practicing as, as well as have people run at me. So while punting in American football. So it was just a, a few things, just trying to adapt to that. And um, I give credit to my coaches. They were, kind of, they were patient with me and they, they realized where I was coming from and I was able to get used to it and yeah, feel comfortable. What's your most memorable moment from playing at the University of Memphis? I have a lot. I mean, just the fact of playing for Memphis football, was, it's been memorable, but um, I've enjoyed the fake punts as much as that's not punning. It's, I've enjoyed being able to do that and even one that got blocked and I was able to run, that was enjoyable. Right. It was a positive thing for the team. You're a big enough guy, a little stiff arm. It's no big deal for you, right? <laughs> yeah, nah. Um, <laughs> I, I try to be an, an athlete, but it's, yeah, the guys on the field are pretty athletic. So it was, it was just enjoyable to get that first down, I'd say that. But just, just in, the fact of playing for men's football has been memorable. Can you believe the career you put together? I mean, obviously you thought uh, that you had the ability to do it, you had the confidence, but now that you look back at your career at Memphis and hopefully playing and, and punting on Sundays in the NFL, do you pinch yourself sometimes? I do. Sometimes I look at what's happened and I can't believe I, I've done that or I've accomplished that. So it is surreal and I'm thankful for what I've been able to achieve and have and thank Memphis for the, the opportunity. So, yeah, sometimes it's just it's unbelievable. But again, I the work has been put in with just not just me but my mm. coaches and teammates and everything so it's credit to them and yeah hopefully it can continue what's it like to be able to call yourself first team all-american feels pretty good um yeah i mean it's an honor to be called that you were also honored uh in florida in orlando during the espn the, the home depot award show it was you and two other guys uh for the ray guy award which yep. is given to the best punter in college football for that season you hear your name called. What was your reaction like when you heard that name called, when you heard your name, and then went up to, uh, to be presented the award from uh, Fowler, Chris Fowler? Uh, my heart dropped, really. I was, um, it'd been a lot of anticipation up to that moment and a lot of things. Like I'd been with the two other finalists for the couple of days that were there, and just as soon as I got known that I was going for the award, it was kind of nerve-wracking. So when it, my name got um, announced, yeah, my heart dropped, and I was had a mixture of feelings, but excitement was one of them. And yeah, went up on the stage, nervous as anything. And 
yeah, had the interview and yeah, still couldn't believe that it had happened. How quickly uh, did you call the family? I got back to my seat after it happened and um, I had my phone on. The message came through and I had sent a couple messages out and my mum and dad and that were able to stream it. So um, it was just through message and then later on that night I was able to talk to them. Where's the trophy now? I think it's still getting sent to, it's either getting sent to Memphis or I've got, that, I've got an award show that they might present it to me on. Well, let's talk about that. On yep. the 16th of this month, the Ray Guy Banquet will be taking place in Atlanta. Yep. And obviously yep. you'll be honored there. How much are you looking forward to that? A lot. It gives me a chance to thank the people that put on the award and then also for the, the, um, the other people that helped me um, get to where, I, where I'm at. So I am looking forward to it and it should be a good night. Two days later, you'll be playing in the NFL Players Association bowl game. There's a, a bunch of bowl games that coincide with the end of the season, whether it be a, a senior bowl type thing uh, or, or others. And you will have a chance to showcase your skills there. Uh, talk about the uh, challenge that that presents and the ability to, to go out there and, and do your thing in front of people. Yeah, I suppose it, it brings a challenge that I'll be with other people and people I'm not familiar with and then also the travel from going from Atlanta back to Los Angeles. But I'm looking forward to it and obviously I have the opportunity to show my skills in front of scouts and I think we're using NFL ball so it'd be a good chance to show that as well, which is what I started practicing with before I came over here. So I'm looking forward to it and hopefully I can um, put something out there that yeah, is, is good and hopefully worth taking. Absolutely. And you've already been invited to the NFL Combine. I think most people know about that. Your chance, once again, to showcase your skills in front of a lot of NFL scouts, coaches, and uh, front office personnel. Yep, got that. Um, I'm not sure what month it is, but I've just accepted the inv invitation. And, um, yeah, again, I'll be practicing and training hard to, to put on a good show for that, and hopefully it can take me further. Have you signed with an agent? I have, yes. Okay. Yep. And what, when you're a punter, a kicker, very rarely do the specialists get drafted. A lot of them end up being free agents, and then you sign with a team that needs um, somebody at that position or wants more competition at that position. So what has your agent told you what to expect? Well, talking to my agent, the, the goal is to get drafted. That's our main objective. Um, we want the best we can get. So I'm um, going to put on a lot of work to get that and obtain that. And, yeah, that is our, our main goal. But... Um, Beyond that, if that if that doesn't work out, definitely trying to get a sign. We we want to sign with somebody, so right. and somewhere. So um, gonna be pushing hard and hopefully put my best foot forward to to get that. Yeah, you certainly have a chance to get drafted. I don't want to mess up uh, people's thoughts out here that punters and kickers don't get drafted. They do, but not not often. More no. the more or less uh, they get signed yeah. as free agents. Let me ask you about this. As you look back at Memphis football, two years with Larry Porter. Two years with Justin Fuente, you've seen a lot of, a lot of lows, but you've seen some highs. Uh, what direction is this team going in? How confident do you feel that Memphis can continue to get better? I'm very confident in how, where Memphis is heading. Um, the progress and the stride that the team's made with Coach Fuente, it's amazing. Like the, where we've come from to where we are now, it's, it's night and day. So the future in Memphis football is, pretty, is really bright. And I think with even if it's... Um, this off-season, putting more work into the, the weight room and on the practice fields, it's, you're going to see it on Saturdays. And even like this last season just gone, it's just that one little thing that is affecting us to win games. And if we can just get over that, the, the hump, as mm -hmm. you'd call it, uh, yeah, Memphis is in for a, a good future. All right, one time for everybody. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, there you go. What does that mean? What's the... What I've what I've had that is is a, it's a I was a catch cry. It's kind of a I've used, always used it as sporting events, right, right. Uh, so cricket and football. I'm not sure. I think it's just a a thing someone made up, or it's a national <laughs> thing that it's, it's called gibberish. on. Yeah, it really is. We, we think it has meaning. It's gibberish. Yeah. All right, Tom. We like to end all our interviews with something we call five for the road. Uh, give me quick answer. First thing that comes to mind to these five questions. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite professional sports team? Uh, Geelong. Football club, Geelong football. Oh, in America, it'd probably. Be, oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, Geelong. Is that are they out of Melbourne? No, it's and now that's where I'm from. It's my hometown. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. So you grew up, you had that professional team right there in your yep. hometown. What's your favorite professional athlete in any sport? Um, oh, there's a guy called Gary Ablett. He's an Australian football player again. He um he's probably the best there ever ever has played the sport. Did you have this poster growing up on your wall in your room? I did. He's actually got it. He played he, Gary Ablett Senior, and then there's Gary Ablett Junior, and they're both the best players that ever played. So 
and they're from Geelong. They played for Geelong, so that's the team. The wow. Do they get the star treatment like the athletes here in, in the States do, the big-time yeah, athletes? They're, they're, they're celebrities, they, right? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're celebrities. What's your favorite music? I like kind of like Jack Johnson, kind of relaxed type mm -hmm. stuff. Um, pretty easygoing, and yeah. Do you like to listen before a game? I do. It's a lot different to what everybody else is playing, but occasionally, like I say, I'll throw on some Jack Johnson or Ben Harper, something kind of just ease the mood a little bit. Yeah, they're, rock, relaxed. they're yeah. rocking, going crazy with their music, yeah. and you're trying to relax yourself. Yeah. You get into that zen, that zen atmosphere. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Uh, Taken. Enjoy Taken. Mm -hmm. um, probably, all, yes. Yeah, it's a good movie. Good yeah. choice. Okay, you said that uh, growing up in Australia, there was some American television there, but maybe there's something from Australia that you liked better growing up. What's your favorite television show? Favorite television show? That's put me on the spot. Yes. Uh, the Office. I, I really love The Office. That's like the American Office. Did they have the American Office in Australia, or did they have the, the English version of The Office? They have both, but I had Steve Crowell and that just the humor they had in there, I, I kind of caught along with. So, yeah, I'd say the U.S. Do you office. have a good sense of humor? Yeah. <laughs> off, off camera. Yeah. Hey, Tom, great to have you here. Thank you so Thank much, you. and best of luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it's time for overtime. Mark Sherrod is one of the most decorated men's soccer players that the University of Memphis has ever produced. He's a two-time player of the year in Conference USA, and this past season, his senior year at Memphis, he was named to the American Athletic Conference first team. Sherrod is third on the Tigers' all-time goal-scoring list and also ranks third in total points. And now he hopes to take his talents to the MLS. Recently, I sat down with Mark, a native of Knoxville, to talk about his career with the Tigers and his future in pro soccer. Mark, happy new year to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me here. Quite an accomplishment, quite, an, quite a career at the University of Memphis. We'll talk about in a second, but the accomplishment of being one of just 50 players around the country to be invited to the MLS Combine in Fort Lauderdale. Talk about that honor. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, you dream as a little kid to be able to play professional, and this is just a little stepping stone to get there, so I'm, I'm excited. What were your expectations coming out of high school in Knoxville uh, once you decided that the University of Memphis was your next destination, what did you expect from your career playing soccer? Uh, I mean, I was nothing but good. Um, I knew a couple guys on the team that I grew up and played club soccer with. And uh, Richie Grant, I knew him a little bit from uh, playing ODP, which is the state team. And um, I knew he'd, they'd been, a couple years ago, they won the conference and got to the NCAA tournament. So I, I couldn't see why we couldn't do that. And we worked at it. Two time. Conference USA Player of the Year. You were a first-team all-conference performer, not only for that league, but this past season, of course, the first year for Memphis in the American Athletic Conference, first-team American Athletic Conference player. What was the difference, by the way, in the caliber of competition in Conference USA and in the American? Was there much difference? You know, I, there. Um, if there was, it was, you know, negligible. Like, you couldn't really tell. But, I mean, both schools, I mean, both, like, conferences were really hard. Like, you really, they're... No, in all honesty, there weren't really that many differences. If I was to ask you to describe your game in one sentence, what would it be? Heading. Heading the ball, probably. I, I'm, I'm used for my height a lot, so I'd say that, that's probably it. All right, you bring up, you bring up heading. We obviously, in, in sports today, uh, there's a real consciousness of, of uh, concussions, yeah. whether it be football, whether it be what, whatever the sport is. We're safety first. You think about it. As many times as you've headed the ball, have you ever had issues with concussions, and do you worry about that? Uh, unfortunately, I have. Yeah, I've had three uh, diagnosed concussions. Um, and, I mean, it's, yeah, it's dangerous every time I go up because you're going up against, you know, one or two defenders, and, you know, you could collide heads with each other. But um, luckily, I've only been able to escape with uh, three, hopefully not going to win no more. Was that from the ball or from hitting, colliding with somebody else and, and knocking heads? Uh, I mean, it's been a combination. I've gotten, uh, I've been a little dazed when a ball hitting me too hard in the head. I've right. gotten hit in the back of the head with someone else's head and elbows, and it's just a combination of things. Do you get more satisfaction from scoring a goal or making a beautiful assist to somebody who scores? Ah, that's a good question. Probably, um, you know, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but probably maybe scoring a goal. I don't mm -hmm. know. I guess it depends on 
the you know the heat of the moment. You won't look at that as selfishness. Okay. No big deal. You had as many assists. I mean, we know that you're third all time in scoring at the University of Memphis, third in goal. So we know you also dished it out, Mark. You, okay. you can be a little selfish on, on that. Um, what do you have to work on to be able to play at that level, the MLS? What part of your game do you need to work on? Um, probably just my overall like foot skills. You know, I've been used as like the big man the past like five years, and. Um, you know, when, like I said, like winning headers and just holding the ball up. But uh, probably my foot skills probably need to be a little bit better, just, you know, with the, my touches on the ball. Um, yeah, I probably do need to work on that a little bit more. Have you always had endurance? Because you obviously need that to play soccer. Yeah, I, uh, I've always considered myself a pretty fit guy. Just from, you know, my position, you run all the time from people playing long balls, you know, chasing down defenders. You run a lot, so... All right, what do you expect to happen this weekend at the Combine? What are you going to be doing? And then, of course, the draft is the following week, and I know that uh, you'll be anticipating hopefully getting your name called, although there's only two rounds of the draft. But what are you expecting this weekend? Uh, well, I, I know it's nothing like, um, you know, your typical NFL draft or, you know, basketball where you have a bunch of drills. Now, there are a few, you know, tests, you know, like agility, I think jumping and maybe one sprint. Um, other than that, you play games. You at the end of 11 v 11, you play three games and you're done. They see how you work with other players, exactly, uh, and also how you work individually. So, there, how about a wonder lick? Is there something equivalent to the football wonder lick where they're going to test your intelligence as well? Uh, you know, uh, I hope not. But I think you pass with flying colors because not only were you a terrific athlete, but you were a terrific student too. You prided yourself on doing well in the classroom. I, I like to think so. I, I work hard at it. What was your degree in? Civil engineering. Wow. <laughs> so it wasn't general studies. Uh, it was no, something sorry. pretty specific. Uh, yeah, um, so again, as you go in this weekend, do you, are you familiar with a lot of the other players that have been selected for this? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'll say real quick, I have a friend um, back in Knoxville I played club with growing up. His name was Tyler Gibson. And we, this whole break, we've been training together. And he's, he got invited down there as well. So that's been really fun. And um, you know, like I, I played over the summer up in Portland with a couple of players that are going down there. So, I mean, yeah, I know a couple of people. Yeah, tell me about that. The last couple of summers uh, practice, uh, playing rather, in the uh, Northwest mm -hmm. uh, up there in Portland. What was that like for you? Uh, it's very rainy. Uh, first it is, off. isn't it? Yeah, it's very that's rainy. Not, that's not a myth. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's rainy for sure. Um, but, no, it was, it was really fun. The competition was amazing up there. Um, you got to play at, you know, Portland Timbers is an MLS organization, and then Surround up there is you got your uh, Seattle Sounders, uh, Vancouver Whitecaps, and all of them also have a uh, under 23 team. So you mm -hmm. got to play, you know, I think the best players in the country over the summer. Does that give you some sort of in at least that they know you because you're on the radar? I like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if um, I'm the first person they look at, but, you know, I've definitely, I think, maybe caught some eyes just because, you know, I've played their teams and, you know, I've been, you know, playing on their fields before. So hopefully someone. You know, I was strolling by and got to see me play. What was your greatest moment as a player at the University of Memphis? <sighs> um, probably two years ago, or I, maybe probably last year. We, uh, two seasons ago, sorry, we played SMU on national TV. And we beat them, and it was senior night, and it was, it was, a, it was a great game. When was the first time in, in your career at Memphis that you knew that, look, I, I made the right choice, I like what I'm doing, and I have a chance uh, after this is all said and done to possibly make a career out of it. Uh, that was probably my sophomore year. Um, unfortunately, our freshman year, my redshirt freshman year, uh, we didn't do so well. Um, didn't have the season we all wanted to. But um, sophomore year, you know, it kickstarted really quickly, and you know, goals started flying. And I don't know, I I was having so much fun with it, and I you know I wanted to keep doing it. The rest is history. Final question for you, since yeah. you are a soccer player, I have to ask you: World Cup coming up. Here in 2014, uh, we know that the United States is in the, the group of death. Yeah. Can they get out of that and can they advance? You know, I think, I think they can. I have, uh, they've shocked some people before. I think they can. Yeah, we'll see. Well, Mark, listen, we, we wish you nothing but the best. It's been very enjoyable watching you and watching your career grow at the University of Memphis. And we look forward to hopefully being able to watch you at the highest level playing professional soccer. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much.
The 24th ranked Memphis Tigers men's basketball team is on the road tonight taking on Louisville as the rivals clash at the Yum Center. This past Saturday, the Tigers took it on the chin at FedEx Forum, getting blasted by Cincinnati 69-53. The Tigers made just two of their 17 three-point attempts, and the Bearcats were also the more physical team as they handed the Tigers their worst home conference loss since 1999, when again, since he beat them, that time by 24. The Memphis women followed up the men at FedEx Forum, and after hanging with top-ranked UConn for the first 10 minutes of the game, were steamrolled by the Huskies 90-49. to Sophomore Ariel Hearn had 20 to lead the Tigers. UConn improved to 15-0. One last note for you. Josh Pastor has fired his strength coach, Frank Matriciano, who also is his brother-in-law. Few details were revealed by Josh for the dismissal, but sources tell me the two just differed on philosophy. And that'll do it for the show. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.